What's up everybody? Got the next edition of my CD collection here. Um, you hear some tune skis in the background. I still haven't fixed my uh, music setup. I just put something on the TV in the background hoping it would be more than enough. Uh, and it is Sounds of Pain by Ur Uriel, something like that. They're a South American band that is kind of death, doom, neoclassical folk, something in that kind of general vicinity and it's really, really good. The CDs are really hard to get a hold of. You can find them, but you're going to pay 20 bucks for the CD and 20 bucks for the shipping. So 40 bucks is a bit, bit steep for um, a CD. So I am just listening to it on the TV and it's the morning. I just got off work earlier. I got to go to the studio to record some stuff for my band today. And I'm sneaking this in before I got to take off. Uh, just drinking a rock star because health. Um, so we're going to start off with the I's and end in the W's this is the last part of my prog and melodic death metal section this is Winter Reich by Immortal Souls if you guys don't know this band this is a killer killer Finnish melodic death metal band maybe leaning on a little bit of progressive element here and there super super good well thought out well put together tune skis dude check out Immortal Souls if you haven't uh, kind of more the atmospheric si style that Finland tends to carry when it comes to this kind of Really good melodic death metal. Got a couple from In Flames, Lunar Strain. Everybody has to have this in their collection, as far as I'm concerned. If you don't, you're slacking hard, dude. Digipack reissue. I don't exactly remember where this one's from. Oh, Regain Records from North America. This is a great classic in the melodic death metal sphere. It took me a long time to get into In Flames because first thing I picked up was Clayman, and I did not like it at all. I haven't revisited it since so I can't speak on my opinions on it currently, but at the time, I got rid of it. Um, this is the Jester Race on the European Super Jewel case, which is kind of sick. I kind of dig on these. I think they're really cool, but they're also, like, impossible to replace if you do break it, so be careful with them, hence why mine's all cracked up. You guys have seen me show a ton of broken jewel cases. I need to get around to fixing that. Uh, this came with the Black Ash Inheritance, I believe is an EP as well, on the tacked on the end. This is a, just a top shelf record. I think this might be my favorite of the In Flames stuff. Uh, not 100% sure though. I don't have Horacle, but I do have Colony. I would call this maybe the last good one. Um, I don't remember if this or Horacle came out first, but Horacle is also very good. I just, uh, I last time I had it in a, a stack, I wound up getting kiboshed so I could buy something else. But yeah, this is another classic. Next, kind of a random one. This is the Incurable Tragedy by Into Eternity. Uh, this is a band from Canada, and they make kind of progressive uh, melodic death metal with a little bit of power metal touches here and there. There's a good amount of clean vocals, and the album cover is actually not as stupid as I originally thought. It's kind of cool. I dig on this one. Not like something I'm listening to all the time, obviously, because this isn't particularly the style of melodic death metal that I listen to a lot of, but it's nonetheless, it's a decent record. Next, I got two records from Incubator. This is Symphonies of Spiritual Cannibalism. Incubator is a German progressive death metal band really weird atonal kind of ridiculous sounding death metal um i really never listened to this i've just had it for a while same thing with this one which is uh <laughs> mcgillroy the housefly uh so whatever that's wonky nonsense is supposed to be i'm not 100 percent certain but yeah i have them they're weird i don't really listen to them can't say much more than that but this one of the best records of the year vast reaches unclaimed by majesties some of the best melodic death metal come out in the past 20 years, as far as I'm concerned. Just everything all around. Brilliant, brilliant record as far as this one goes, man. Uh, it's tonally super interesting. It gets cooking sometimes, but it also knows how to hold back and really ride out a good riff and really ride out a good atmosphere, which I think is something that gets lost in translation for a lot of these melodic death metal bands. I don't know. Love it. Uh, possibly my favorite actually definitely my favorite death metal band of all time here orchid by opeth this is too good dude i put this on every fall and i absolutely love it under the weeping moon the twilight is my robe forest of october just super 
super pretty atmospheric melodic death metal with some prog into it uh into the frost of winter is a really cool song tacked on the end it's a bit of a black metal attack to it which i kind of feel like is embodied a little bit on these first two being this one and morning rise this has got a quite a bit of black metal atmosphere as far as i'm concerned but dude this is such a pretty pretty album if you don't know like black rose immortal dude you are just missing out and the night in the silent water the opening track advent uh yes dude to bid you farewell seriously some of the most classic death metal of all time as far as i'm concerned oh dude too good too good my arms your hearse uh one of the fan favorites i would say i really like the song demon of the fall but uh i don't know man i don't know which one would be my favorite that probably would be it uh but the circle of the tyrant's celtic frost cover is a little weird but it fits it really does it merges well into the rest of this record i'm not exactly sure why but it really does this is like the forgotten album for me because i i listen to it sparingly this is still life um, I mean, everybody knows songs like Face of Melinda and stuff like that, but uh, Benighted is a cool one, The More is Great, Moonlapse Vertigo, just it's, it's all around, it's a stellar record, man, I just haven't really listened to it nearly as much as some of the other early Opeth material, uh, just because I got it later on, uh, but this is probably the fan favorite up next here, Blackwater Park, Digipack, Digibook, I should say, um, The Drapery Falls is one of my favorite songs that they ever did. But the whole thing, dude, the Leper Affinity is great. Bleak Harvest is one of the best Opeth songs. Uh, Dirge for November is a really, really cool one. I, honestly, there's not a bad song on here. Patterns in the Ivy, uh, dude, just so, so good. Funeral Portrait, all around a classic record. It's just not my exact favorite because I think it's just because it's not the first one that I ever heard. And next up is my favorite Opeth record, which is Deliverance. Uh, this is probably my favorite because it's the first Opeth I ever heard, and ever since I've just been absolutely, absolutely feral, foaming at the mouth for as much Opeth as possible. The first track I ever heard was Master's Apprentice. And if that doesn't reek of Morbid Angel, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but the title track, Deliverance, is so, so good. Uh, for Absent Friends, a Fair Judgment Wreath by The Pain I See in Others. Dude, this is a 10 out of 10 perfect record all around. This is its uh, companion piece, Damnation, the kind of prog rock installment of Opeth, kind of the first taste of what would come. And this is actually something I got my wife into in high school when I would sit there and chit chat with her on the school bus, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, she wound up liking this, she didn't like the other stuff, but I, I wrote a whole report about the track Deliverance analyzing music in school. Uh, it's just so, so good. I mean, Death Whisper to Lullaby, Window pane to rid the disease, closure, weakness. Dude, this is another 10 out of 10 perfect record. These two pair perfect with each other. This is another one of my absolute favorites in the Opeth catalog. Uh, I don't know. This might be the other fan favorite, I would think, compared to Blackwater Park, but Ghost Reveries, just is such a stellar record, dude. Seriously, such a good record. Uh, Ghost of Perdition opens it up, but Beneath the Mire is great. The Grand Conjuring, uh, Atonement, just, dude, such a good record. Uh, it comes with Beyond the Ghost Reverie. It's a documentary uh, of the making of the album, which is funny because you basically just follow these guys around a room and watch them compulsively smoke cigarettes <laughs> for 45 minutes. It's a time, dude. It's a real time. Uh, but I just absolutely adore this band. Seriously, you guys are well aware of that. And the last of the death metal era is right here, which is Watershed. Uh, this is a great note to end on for an era, the end of the era, dude. Coil is a great opening track with Axe's girlfriend at the time, who was a Swedish model, uh, singing with Michael. But the, lo the Lotus Eater is amazing. Burden, Air Appendant, Air Appendant, Air Apparent, good golly. Uh, Porcelain Heart, Hex Omega, Hessian Peel. This is a 10 out of 10 record, too. Um, there's not a bad song on any of those records I just talked about. I seriously, 100% of the way through, love every song on every one of those albums. And this is uh, kind of where the change really started. This is Heritage, and I like this album quite a bit. Uh, the Devil's Orchard is probably the first song on here that I remember hearing, but Folklore is a great song. Um, the title track, Heritage, 
I Feel the Dark. Just uh, seriously, it's a really, really good prog rock album, prog metal album, whatever you want to call it, because it's still maintaining a pretty heaviness to it. This is still a little bit of the metal too, which is Pale Communion. Um, you know, Eternal Rain will come. So as above, so below, Elysian Vow, uh, Cusp of Eternity, it's Faith in Others, another really, really stellar progressive metal record. And that is not my style, but I really, really think that this band just does well all the time. This is where it kind of started teetering a little bit for some of the people. Uh, I actually, obviously, after Watershed is where it really started teetering. But this is the Sorceress. Um, I saw them on this tour for the first time. Was That's the first time I got to see Opeth, which was a really good time. And the, the coolest thing in the world. So a whole band signed the CD. I, was, I picked this up for 20 bucks, dude. That is how you do it. I will gladly pay five extra dollars for the whole band to sign the CD. But this is great. I really like the song Will-O-Wisp on here. Um... The Sorceress is a cool track too, but Willow Wisp in particular is awesome. It's a really Jethro Tull kind of inspired progressive rock song. They've really dwelled into the more rock side on this one. Uh, and I saw them touring with the sword, which is really, really cool. Really actually fit really well with each other. And the last Opeth album I have, this is Enconde Venium. This is a version that comes with both discs, three discs actually. Uh, it comes with the English version, the Swedish version and disc three, which is full of bonus tracks, not signed. Uh, they have Lord, Lord Farquaad from Shrek on the inside here, I believe. Really, really good record. This is probably the one I've heard the least amount of times because if I'm listening to Opeth, I just rattled off 11 albums that I think are absolutely perfect. Um, it's hard to just, you know, hit this one up because I don't think it's nearly as good as the other stuff. Next, this is a record that I just somehow have and haven't really gotten rid of a uh, but this is Promises and Blood by Paths of Possession. This is a side project of George Corpse Grinder Fisher playing melodic death metal in the relatively boring American style that we tend to like to do over here, where it's just thrashy, old-school death metal with a little bit more melodic riffs. Uh, and that sounds like something I would like. It just really doesn't hit the spot, though. I don't know, man. They kind of hit the... They miss the mark a little bit on this one. Uh, and I got a bunch from Revocation, which is weird because I don't listen to that much Revocation. Existence is futile. Can't say too much about this one. The early revocations kind of hit or miss for me. And I do have Chaos Forms. My buddy, uh, the old guitar player in my old band, is a huge revocation guy or was a huge revocation guy. So I just picked up all these when he was cleaning out his collection. And Empire of the Obscene. Like I said, I literally have most of the full lengths up through probably the newest one I don't have. Um, this is self titled. I'm not talking about these because I have nothing to say. I don't listen to these very much. I just have them in the collection. This is what I really start getting on board for a vacation. This is Deathless. This is such a great, great record, dude. A Dead Out of the Grave going into Deathless, the title track. <coughs> is probably the best song on this one. Witch Trials is a really good, thrashy, aggressive, prog, death metal sound. This is just a, such one. Such a great one. This is Great as Our Sin. This is probably the one that I've seen, I've listened to the most, because for a while there, that that uh, buddy of mine was obsessed with this and was constantly listening to this one. Just a great all-around progressive, thrashy, tacky death metal record. And this is the Outer Ones, kind of the HP Lovecraft edition of Revocation. It's a little different, that's for sure, but I think it fits well. They've really embraced the old-school death metal on this one. Good stuff. Next, a random obscurity. This is Season of the Tall Pines by Scythe. Um, this is a German progressive death metal band. And this is their last record from 2010, I want to say. It doesn't say on the back. One of my favorite things always is hand-numbered copies. Number 233 out of 700. I always love when bands do that. I picked this up in like one of those first waves of me going out and just buying things with nature covers. Because I thought that's what black metal was. Um, and... This came home with me, and I wound up being like, huh, interesting. This is not black metal, but I do like it. It's cool prog death. A uh, little weird taste, because it's German, and German does death, Germany does death metal a little different, which I appreciate. Next, Dan Swano, Moon Tower. I picked this up for $4. I know. What a score. What an absolute brilliant score, dude. I absolutely love this record. It's 
Dan Swano doing Dan Swano. It's proggy, it's really good death metal, and it's well put together. Lots of keyboards, really expansive compositions, kind of somewhere between Edge of Sanity and Early Amorphous, I would probably say. It's really well put together, Dan Swano death metal. Dude, the guy's an absolute monster of a songwriter. This is Vo Vovin by Therion. I only have the one Therion record. Uh, I do have a demo, too, that's not up on the shelf yet. I think it's still farting around somewhere else. But, uh, yeah, this is a decent record, kind of in the middle of their catalog. It's not the most amazing thing you've ever heard, but it's cool. It kind of hits a good atmosphere sometimes when I'm in the mood for it. Next is a bunch of CDs from a local band that I'm kind of a member of, I think, sort of. Uh, Triguna with Embryonic Forms. This is like one of the first death metal bands that I really affiliated myself with a lot, uh, kind of early on when I was playing in a thrash band. And I played bass on some of the stuff for this record when we played live. Um, I didn't track on this record by any means, but it's a great old school thrashy death metal record. And then they kind of started to get really avant-garde and maladaptive here, getting really weird. This is an EP. Uh, dude, there's some weird stuff on here. Skull Cage. Uh, interpretations of bootleg Broadway just really out there these are both CDRs this is really early on for this band so they're still you know working up the budget to print some CDs and I have a sealed copy of their next record because I've shipped off copies of this to several people but this is gratifying severed hearts uh, this is where they really embraced a lot of stoner metal into like Dillinger escape plan fueled Gorgats it's very interesting it's a very odd band uh, this right here is my buddy Jeremy. He's the bass player in my folk band, and these are all my other homies too. Just a, a great bunch of dudes, weird, weird death metal. This is where they really start coming to their own, I think. This is the Mark of Sacrifice, really embracing somewhere between Gorgots, Also Rate, and the Dillinger Escape Plan still. That's just like kind of what I think of when I think of Triguna, and good record. And the EP here, I actually played on this EP. Uh, you can see me, my, I'm listed in there. I played the synthesizer and I did some of the clean vocals for it. Uh, all around, pretty great EP. I didn't write anything besides the, the synth parts, but I love it. I really do like this album. And if I wasn't on it, I would still like it, even though it's my buddy's band. But I will be involved with the next record. They're working on a dissonant death metal record, and then I'll come in and add some crap over the top. Next, this is a new record too, Threads of Unknowing by Void Ceremony. Uh, I picked this up out of a record store in Madison, buying it from the drummer of, oh, what's the name of that band? I don't know. He worked at the record store, and it's a band, that uh, Ossuary. Um, and I really liked it. I thought it was a really good black and death metal, melodic, proggy record. It's just it's a good all-around record. Do check this out if you haven't heard very, the new Void Ceremony. I love this band, and both of these records are top shelf. This is Winter Sun with Winter Sun. This is such a great record, dude. Beyond the Dark Sun and Winter Madness is just such a brilliant, brilliant composition for a melodic death metal, kind of folk metal mixed in between there, power metal somewhere in between. Cats causing trouble over there. Time One, I don't have the newest one, but Time One is just seriously so brilliant. I don't care that Yari is kind of a turd. Not my problem. I don't not not concerned and the last one for this section this is the inheritance by witherscape this is another dan swano side project uh and it's really really good it's not something i listen to very much but it's definitely managed to stay around the collection so i'm gonna leave it at that uh i will have doom metal up next specifically the death and funeral doom section so i'll catch you on the next one keep it greasy